When Comet R2 Swan first appeared in the night sky back in 2020, it was just another dazzling visitor from the depths of space, a frozen wanderer glowing with cyan light racing toward the sun. But what the world didn't know is that R2 Swan wasn't done with us. After years of silence, the James Webb Space Telescope turned its golden mirrors toward a faint, returning object, an icy traveler that shouldn't have been back for another 700 years. And what Webb saw next shocked everyone at NASA. The telescope's sensors detected comet R2 Swan alive again, brighter, hotter, and moving in a way that broke every known law of orbital mechanics. Instead of looping harmlessly through the outer solar system like most comets, R2 Swan had shifted course, its trajectory had changed, and it was heading straight for Mars. At first, scientists thought it was a mistake. Comets don't just change direction, they follow predictable orbits defined by gravity, unless something powerful interferes. But Webb's data was irrefutable. The near-infrared camera showed heat signatures on the comet's core far too strong for its distance from the sun. It looked like the comet had been superheated from within, as if something was burning inside it. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory issued a silent update to a select few astronomers. R2 Swan displaying anomalous acceleration, possibly non-gravitational. That phrase, non-gravitational acceleration, meant one thing. The comet was being pushed by something other than the sun. A solar flare? No. Radiation pressure? Impossible at this scale. Then what could it be? When Webb's spectrograph analyzed the gases venting from the comet, it found traces of exotic molecules, ionized xenon and molecular hydrogen, substances rarely seen in natural comets. But both are used in plasma propulsion systems. Let that sink in. A comet, supposedly a frozen rock from the Oort cloud, was emitting fuel signatures found in spacecraft engines. The deeper Webb looked, the more unnatural it became. A strange hexagonal pattern glowed faintly near the comet's nucleus, a formation too symmetrical to be natural. And behind the comet, a thin, pulsating trail of light extended like a wake, not scattered dust, but ionized plasma. Astronomers began to whisper what no one wanted to say aloud. What if R2 Swan isn't just a comet? The idea seemed absurd, yet the data fit too perfectly. Webb continued tracking R2 Swan as it passed the orbit of Jupiter, but instead of slowing down, the comet accelerated. It was now moving at nearly 60 kilometers per second, faster than any known natural object of its size. It's heading a direct intercept course for Mars. NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office calculated the odds. Impact probability, 87%. Estimated arrival, seven months from now. If R2 Swan hits Mars, it would release energy equivalent to hundreds of nuclear bombs, enough to vaporize a region the size of Texas. The red planet, once silent and still, could soon be witness to the most violent impact in recorded history. But here's where it gets even stranger. When Webb focused on Mars itself, it detected something waiting, a thin magnetic anomaly forming near the planet's northern hemisphere, a distortion in its magnetic field, as if the planet was responding, almost like the planet knew what was coming. Scientists scrambled to explain. Was it coincidence? Could R2 Swan's tail be ionizing the Martian atmosphere ahead of impact? Or was this something else entirely? Something that had been planned for millions of years? Because when NASA traced R2 Swan's orbit backward, it led to a region of space known as the Cygnus Arm, the same galactic neighborhood where Webb recently detected unusual radio bursts coming from what looked like an artificial structure. Coincidence or cosmic design? Whatever it was, R2 Swan was no longer just a comet. It had become a mystery, one hurtling straight toward our nearest neighbor. And what the James Webb Telescope discovered next would make humanity question everything we thought we knew about Mars. As the days passed, every major observatory locked on to R2 Swan. China's Tianwen Orbiter, ESA's Mars Express, and NASA's Perseverance Rover all pointed their instruments skyward, waiting for what was coming. 
And then, it happened. Webb's infrared sensors caught something impossible, a beam of energy pulsing faintly from Mars aimed directly at R2 Swan. It wasn't a reflection. It wasn't solar interference. It was a targeted signal, rhythmic, deliberate, and powerful enough to ionize dust in the comet's path. NASA scientists were stunned. Was Mars responding to the incoming comet? Soon after the signal appeared, R2 Swan's acceleration decreased. Its once chaotic plasma emissions stabilized, and the comet began to rotate, slowly, aligning itself with the Martian pole. That's when James Webb's instruments picked up something buried deep beneath the red planet's surface, a faint electromagnetic pulse beating in sync with the comet's own energy bursts. It was as if Mars and R2 Swan were communicating. For centuries, Mars has held our imagination, tales of canals, lost civilizations, and mysterious signals. But this, this was the first real evidence that something beneath its surface might still be active. As the comet drew closer, strange phenomena began occurring across the Martian surface. The planet's thin atmosphere started glowing faintly at night, like auroras rippling across its sky. Dust storms that had raged for months suddenly ceased, and a deep tremor, recorded by the InSight lander before it went offline, pulsed through the crust in perfect rhythm with R2 Swan's approaching cycle. Scientists couldn't explain it, but one thing was clear. The comet wasn't crashing by accident. It was being guided. Webb's data confirmed it. Micro-adjustments in the comet's trajectory were happening every 19 hours, matching the pulse from Mars's magnetic field. Each burst seemed to steer the comet more precisely, narrowing its approach corridor. Then, on day 173 of observation, a new signal appeared. This time, not from Mars, but from within R2 Swan itself. The signal was binary, structured, and intentional. When decoded, it formed a repeating pattern, a series of geometric sequences that depicted planetary orbits, molecular chains, and then unmistakably, the outline of Mars. At the bottom of the pattern, a single repeating phrase in data form appeared. The seed returns. Humanity had no idea what it meant, but the implications were terrifying. Could R2 Swan be a delivery system? A carrier of something ancient? Perhaps even biological? Was Mars once home to life, and this comet, its messenger, returning to reignite what was lost? NASA debated whether to intercept it, but Webb's final readings revealed a truth that left every scientist speechless. The nucleus of R2 Swan wasn't solid ice, it was hollow, and inside it was metal. High-density, structured metal. Reflective, hexagonal, and spanning nearly two kilometers in width, the object wasn't a rock, it was a vessel. By now, the entire world was watching. As the comet neared Mars, live feeds from orbital satellites captured something extraordinary. The object slowed down. Just above the Martian atmosphere, its glowing core split open like a blooming flower, releasing a blinding surge of light. And then, it stopped moving. Hovering above the planet, R2 Swan disintegrated, scattering fragments that rained across Mars in a perfect geometric pattern, forming a glowing circle nearly 200 miles wide. Webb's thermal sensors detected immediate temperature fluctuations, patches of warmth emerging from the surface directly beneath the impact zone. Moments later, Mars's thin atmosphere shimmered and a faint radio signal echoed through deep space. Activation complete. The signal was unlike anything NASA had ever recorded, pure, structured, and resonating across multiple frequencies as if designed to be heard across the stars. Some believed it was the awakening of an ancient Martian defense system. Others thought it was a beacon, a message sent to whoever launched R2 Swan millions of years ago. But one theory stands above all, that Mars was never dead. It was asleep, and R2 Swan was the key to waking it up. Since that day, telescopes across Earth have observed strange lights flickering beneath the Martian surface, symmetrical, pulsing, rhythmic. And Webb, still locked on the Red Planet, continues to receive low-level transmissions that repeat the same haunting phrase 